Line, Mark Taylor Canfield out of Seattle. Hey, Mark, what's up? Well, first of all, everyone should go and read your article about the three steps to fascism, because as executive director for Democracy Watch News, we're headed for trouble, folks. Yeah. These people are following a model that people followed in the 1930s across Europe, and we do not want to see that again. But that's not why I called, Tom. I'm just glad that you're, you're speaking truth to power there. I wanted to give everybody a heads up that on Monday, the Seattle City Council is voting on a new rent control ordinance sponsored by our Democratic Socialist City Council member, Shama Sawant, mm -hmm. who's still on the council, although she's not running for re-election in November. And the council held a public hearing last week where I performed my song about rent control, and everybody seemed to love it. I got a good ovation. Good By the way, you. folks can check out my music. If you want to hear my music, you can go to YouTube and check out my video, Mother Freedom, dedicated to people fighting for freedom all across the globe. But here's the thing, Tom. The Washington State Legislature has prohibited rent control in this state. So this city law, if it's passed on Monday, will immediately be challenged. Uh, but I think what the sponsors would like to do is actually just help use this as a trigger law to put pressure on Democrats in the state legislature to overturn the ban on, ban on rent control. There is it just a simple that, law or is it a constitutional issue? No, it's a law. It, the, the voters uh, voted down an uh, initiative in 1980 on rent control. So they consider it to have been uh, decided unless there's another referendum. Mm. Um, but. Honestly, you know, the rents in Seattle have doubled. There are apartments renting for $5,000 a month now. And wow. to quote a candidate for New York City uh, City Council a few years ago, the rents are too damn high. Yeah. When I was in Europe and I knew I was going to move back to the United States, there were only two places I wanted to live, either San Francisco or Seattle. I wanted to be on the West Coast. And at that time, San Francisco was much more expensive, but not so much anymore. Yeah. So, you know, and once again, in a democracy... We all know that if you have a, a massive lo uh, lack of affordable housing and a massive homeless population, then people don't vote. They don't get involved with civics. They don't show. They don't run for office, and you know right. democracy really suffers. So I keep bringing that up over and over again at these city council hearings. Is there any? Uh, is there any um, uh, data on what percentage of the single-family homes in Seattle are uh, uh, rental homes are uh, owned by hedge funds and and uh, investors? No, but that's a very, very good point, and that's something that people should be bringing up. I've heard uh, Shama Sawant talk about that, but, but people should be bringing that up at, during their testimony at these public hearings because that is a major problem. I do know that um, there, there's been a huge investment from China in Seattle that in the in the private housing market, mm. and so you know we have been able to get some things passed. Um, by the way, this rent control would be tied to inflation, which is currently about 21% since I think like 2010 or whatever. But um, we do have a law that requires a six-month notice for rent increases because there were things happening where people were getting 30 days notice and then they were tripling the rents and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there, Shama Sawant has been basically the sponsor for most of these bills, dragging the rest of the city council with her. So there has been some success, but we definitely need rent control in Seattle. And just like the guy in New York said, the rents are too damn high, Tom. We really need to do something about that here. I'm, I get it. I'm with you. Mark Taylor Canfield. Mark, thanks a lot. It's uh, 10 minutes before the hour. We'll be right back. More of your calls here on Anything Goes Weekend. Stay with us. If you're listening to us on a commercial station, call their advertisers and let them know you're listening. If you're listening to us on Pacifica, one of our many nonprofit stations, please support them when they do their fundraising drives. Back in 2010, when Viktor Orban took over the Fidesz party in Hungary, uh, that party was sort of like the Republican party. It was just a conventional conservative European political party. And he has turned it into a neo-fascist powerhouse um, he, they, he pushed through the, he altered the nation's constitution to push through what we would call gerrymandering and voter suppression so that his party will always win. He campaigned on building a wall. Build a wall was literally one of his campaign slogans. And he did build a wall across the southern border of Hungary to, to keep out Syrian refugees who were fleeing the, the violence when Russia was bombing that country. Um, his other two campaign slogans were, and I quote, restore Christian purity 
and make Hungary great again. Seriously, back in 2010, six years before Trump, there's an amazing backstory about how Viktor Orban is being cloned, essentially, in the GOP. You can find the article over at HartmanReport.com. Check it out.